wonderful having you here this week, Brian. Hey, thanks, Penny. It's been really great to be here at BGSU. I've had a wonderful time, and it's an amazing year of all the things that you're doing here at this, oh, this university. It's been, it's been fun. But your recital and master class were definitely highlights of my year. Thank you. So we have somewhat similar backgrounds. Yes. So could you talk about your home and your family and how you got involved in playing the violin? Sure. Well, you and I are both from Kansas, of course, Absolutely. which is an excellent, excellent thing. <laughs> Go Kansas. Um, as was Dorothy Delay. Yes. So, you know, there, there's a big, big tradition of people coming from, from Kansas and being in the music industry. Um, I started playing the violin when I was four years old, and I thought it was a very natural and normal thing to play the violin, because everybody in my family played the violin. I was actually very shocked when I went to kindergarten to find out that not everybody plays. Um, and so music was always a very important part of the household growing up, uh, whether you're listening to classical music or whether you're performing and practicing it. Um, it's always been something that's been very important in our lives as, in general. My dad, who uh, was an organic chemistry professor at Ottawa University, was a big fan of classical music. So we, he came to all of our concerts. Uh, so he, he was very much into sports himself and was actually captain of the basketball team at William Jewell College where they went fourth in the nation. Wow. Um, and I thought and, it was Yes, Jewell. exactly. So that there's always those, those connections. So, uh, yeah, I just thought it was a normal thing to have music in, in your life. And, and I feel very blessed to have a, a music in my life now. And now you're teaching at University of Texas at Austin. How long have you been there? I've been teaching at UT for the last 13 years. i <laughs> um, And so it's, re it's really great to come back and move uh, from New York City to, to Austin, Texas. And it's a, a wonderful school there and university. And so we're having a wonderful time. Great. And another thing we have in common is we both were Suzuki students. That's right. We're both Suzuki students. And, I count Dr. Suzuki as one of the major influences in my life in terms of uh, philosophy and also in play. I, I had the, the wonderful opportunity to get to go study with Dr. Suzuki in Japan um, twice, and this is a long time ago, back in, in the 1970s, 1974, 1979. Um, and it was, it was an amazing experience to get to go at that age from Kansas to go experience such a different culture, uh, but to be surrounded by uh, people that are thinking about how to talk about education and how to think about uh, really bringing out certain things in the music. Uh, one of the things that Dr. Suzuki was very, very much into and all, all the time in his teaching was the quality of sound, total production. Um, certain teachers have certain things that they, they really value in music, and I know very much that, that he thought that, that the sound and communication of sound is really how we relate to each other, and that voice on the violin is an extension of our own personal self. So I was very glad that he planted those seeds uh, to in me when I was so young. He was a wonderful influence in, on me in the fact that he also instilled the concept of reviewing pieces, having a repertoire, um, and being sure that you're listening. All these things that, that Dorothy Delay also had me do at the Juilliard School were things that Dr. Suzuki was having me do uh, when I was a young child. So. There are some very important things that, that we can learn from our teachers, and uh, I feel very lucky, like I said, that, that he has been such an amazing influence in my life. One of the things you said just today with one of my students struck me, that there's really only a handful of things that we're really teaching. And sometimes I think that we get caught up in how we're different, in the different schools or who you study with, but there's more similarities than there are differences. I also felt that there were different camps, different philosophies, different belief systems. Um, and we all have different influences. That, that's, that is the truth. The real thing is we have more in common than we have not in common. And that's true of us as violinists and also true of us as people when we're relating to different cultures and different people. Maybe their culture is a little bit different than the culture that you may have grown up in. Uh, but it is something that, that we're all people, we're all human beings, and we're all important because we are human. Another huge influence of my office, Dorothy Delay, at the Juilliard School, and uh, like we said just a little bit ago, she was also from Kansas, and I learned an immense amount from her, and to, uh, one of the things that I learned a lot from her is to be sure to keep an open mind, to be open to different bits of information that come in. How do you process it, and how can it become meaningful to you? Everybody wants to have a good spaghetti, right? Everybody wants to have a good legato. Uh, 
um, and on all the various bow strokes. So there are different ways to go about doing it, but it's still spiccato, right? So the, the, the thing that we may be working on can unite us. How we get to, to accomplish those tasks what is what makes us different. Well, and talking about culture, could you say something about the culture shock you faced when you moved to New York City <laughs> by yourself oh, at 18 years old? Oh, my goodness. I tell you, it was, it was shocking to me. And I feel lucky that I traveled a lot growing up playing concerts and things, but nothing had quite prepared for me to move uh, to 93rd and Broadway uh, and in New York City. I saw things that I had never thought I would see. <laughs> or imagine. Uh, or imagine, actually. I think you're actually right. Uh, and it, it, was, it was a big culture shock for me because, of course, Ottawa, Kansas is a town of about 11,000 people, and New York City being around 11 million people. It was a little bit of a, a, a big shock. Dorothy DeLay was truly a mentor in, in every aspect for you. Right. I try to take her example when I teach now is to, to really be available to my students to help them with whatever issue is that they're facing, not just technique or music, but if there are any, any issues in their, in their own personal lives uh, that need to have some discussion, I'm happy to talk to them about that. And Dorothy DeLay was that way. Uh, for me, she gave me a lot of good advice, and she had said to me, you know, sugar plum. I always call her, but yeah, sugar plums. I was just telling me, sugar plum. If there's anything that you know you see or hear that you don't know about, uh, feel free to come and ask me. And it was it was really great because there were a bunch of things I didn't know about. This way really valued us expressing ourselves and who we are, not trying to become a cookie cutter violinist, uh, but really trying to find your own music making ability. And of course, the technique that she taught us was something that she thought everybody needed to have. So there's that the base technique that she thought that freedom of music comes through mastery of technique. Because then you are free to make any musical decision. You're not tied and bound by 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 any limitations in your technique. Right. We all have this image of Juilliard being extremely cutthroat. And how did you survive that? For me, it was not a cutthroat experience. It's very high powered. I mean, make no mistake. There is a lot of intensity. Juilliard School, but I think that you'll find that that be true of any any top top conservatories and music schools. There is that energy, there's that creative spirit, but there and everybody's working. You can just feel it when you walk into the building. I always thought of it as energy, not as tension, um, and I, I think of that even now. Thank you so much, Brian. It's just been a delight having you here. Hey, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>